Now in this next video, this is going to be about installing the radiator for my little 120cc deal. The wiring is in better shape. The front cowling is on. The wiring in the, uh, on the very front, and you can see my air scoop holes there, they're set where I want. But my next, um, now this, this is, sounds simple, but it's not. As you notice where this pipe, or it's called a um, refrigerator, no, 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 a washing machine line comes up. And I use this because it's a, just a little bit smaller than rubber line. And it fits right down in between the slats going down and underneath the bike. Anyway, what I have to do, it's very simple. We take the Benzomatic, we heat it up, and I have to put on copper fittings, which are here, and also the copper pipe. Now on one side where the on the on the left side facing the bike, facing the front, I only need about an inch. And that will put this pipe threaded, regular pipe thread to regular thread, you know, half inch onto here. Now on the other side I need about five and a half inches right here. Now, this is five and a half inches, which we deal with in America. We don't use centimeters. I, I'm no good with metric anyway. And there's the one inch, and they're going to fit right inside these uh, fittings here. But the most important part about doing this is the planning. And I, I want to go over that for just a minute for anyone that wants to put a radiator in their bike. Now, when you do it, you're going to have to remember that chances are it's going to leak. It's going to leak or it's going to get loose due to heat. Now, I'm putting these, let me sit down here, my little snap on stool. These are going, these are cold right now because it's in January, but they're going to get warm. When they get warm, they are going to thin out and they will need to be tightened. Therefore my fittings that come off the radiator from about right here have got to come down to where I can get at it, get at the hose clamps that this is going to mate to with a screwdriver or a socket. The same goes to the other side but there is also a trick too as you can see the bend the bend in the pipe as it comes up, I can't get the fitting too close to the apex of the bend or else I'll kink the line. The same over here on this side. Now that's one problem. The next problem is when you go to place your radiator, you want to place the radiator, you want to give yourself an extra inch of line or just enough play to where if you need to take that radiator out for any reason, like maybe you need to do the wiring or whatever, that everything isn't so tight in there that you've got to cut everything up and restart it. You want to give yourself a little bit of leeway on the on the lines here so that you can wiggle your radiator around. You can always strap the radiator down, but if you need to take it out and you can't get at, get it out without ripping up your lines, then you're not doing too good of a job. Now that segues right into my next thing with carburetors for just a moment. Now if you'll notice on this carburetor line uh, I have a good fuel filter and I have this uh, carburetor line and you can see it's kind of bendy and it goes down in there. It's about an inch and a half too long. The reason is if I need to take this carburetor off and adjust it or turn it upside down or sideways that I'm able to do that because I have enough line to do it. I'm just making the job easier to adjust because 
Adjustments are uh, a lot of things do on these these little deal race bikes. Let's have the fun of them. If I had a Hayabusa or a CBR 1000, you don't really need to adjust them. You just kind of need to hold on and change spark plugs every once in a while. So on my next part of the video, well, I'll show you. As you can see by my professional solder job, if I can show you this is the way it's supposed to be done. As you can see, for some reason I didn't win the North American Solder Artistic Award badge this year in America. But what I've done is I have, let me get my little I'm always forgetting something. My, my, my bench is a mess. I usually have a I usually work on a, a, lot, a big project and then I put every, all my tools away then I break all my tools back out again. I make a mess all over again and I have fun. I'm 50 years old. I don't care anymore. Anyway, this is what I wanted to try and get rid of. I used to have a um, hose clamp here and here and what I wanted to try was to eliminate that. Now as we go down towards the bottom here, this is a pipe thread fitting which will go on to this here, like this. And like I said, you have to be... Well get on there, damn it. Um, you have to know where to put these on in the bike because when the hose gets clamped on right here I have to be able to take that hose clamp and tighten it or loosen it or do whatever I have to do to get that to get the radiator out and this is by experience so on the other side I have the same thing now what I will do next is I will put uh, threading uh, Teflon thread around here and tighten that on really good make sure it's all tight and then I'll stick it in the bike well, before I do that, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Before I do all that, I will put a bunch of hot water through the radiator, get rid of any flux that may be in there, and to make sure it doesn't leak. And I wanted to show you a couple of really new additions I've got. These are some really cool um, spikes that you put on your little tiny license plate. And these are two little dealy bobs that they twist on so you got to hold that camera just right if you get too close you go out of focus these twist onto your your tire air stems and you put little tiny um, batteries in them and you got to move real close real slow when you do this because it'll go out of focus real fast see so then you move your camera away and as you focus on a different part of your of, of uh, what you're filming it's good well while you're talking is to zoom in on something like the cap here the thing is that on YouTube it's a worldwide operation and being American I kind of think everyone speaks English but they don't well I know they don't so being a visual a visual medium it's always good that's where I was trained at I'm a painter. It's always good to express your videos visually as much as you can and keep everything in focus and mainly keep it interesting. Like with all this crap here, uh, junk, I don't know what they call it around the world. Okay, that's 9 minutes and 30 seconds. This is going to be my new bike. It's going to be Repsol. I've got some uh, really neat uh, um, emblems coming in for it. I'm going to paint it orange. Okay, I'm running out of tape. I'm going to have to get a new uh, disc.